morning and welcome to my channel. I'm Tiana and this video is going to be just a chit chat about all of the culture shocks that I have experienced in the Netherlands. And let me tell you, it's a lot. <laughs> I've been here for about nine months now. I want to start this off by saying I love the Netherlands. There are a lot of things that are missing here or new here that this video will go over, but don't think that because I'm saying like, oh, you don't have this and you don't have this, that I don't like it here because I love it here. I think it's great. I think a lot of the things that we're missing here that I'm used to in America are just because like life is just simpler here. People aren't so materialistic. They don't need as much. And so yeah, the way of life is just different. Now, if you hear any little bells jingle jangling or any little giggles or anything, my daughter is right below me, so <laughs> she's playing on her little mat. But yeah, let's get started. So firstly, I'm going to talk about the social life. The social life here in the Netherlands is so different than in America. I feel like in America, once you get to a certain age, like you kind of stop having a social life. You don't really go out and here, they, the older people go to festivals, they go out to drink, they have lots of friends. Like the social life here is wonderful. And one of my favorite things that they do here is the cafe life. They just like, people just go to a cafe and sit next to each other and just sit and people watch and just hang out. I love that. In America, I feel like it's much more go, 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 rush, rush, rush. And the cafes here are all in amazing places where you can sit and actually see something nice instead of in a concrete box like in America with a road next to you. <laughs> the social life is booming and that comes with the caveat of everyone's schedules are booked out. It is bizarre. I've had some friends or family members that are like, yeah, we can hang out in two months let's put it on the calendar to have a barbecue in two months i'm like what do you mean in two months like what do, how do i know if i even want to have a barbecue in two months you know like i feel like it's like a maybe next week but like so far out people plan here and people's schedules sometimes are booked 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 and so yeah that's definitely new hi <laughs> she's just staring at me but the Cities here also plan and organize so much stuff for everyone to do. Like right now it's Easter and this whole week there's just been like Easter egg hunts in the city. Like a golden egg that has 50 to 100 euros in them and stuff like that. And there's there's a wine festivals and a music festival and a yeah, jazz festival throughout the whole year. There's always stuff going on in I feel like every city. Like I live in a pretty small city and we still have those kind of things going on all the time, which is amazing. One other super big culture shock for me was the tipping culture. I knew I have traveled a lot, and so I'm used to like the whole like, oh, they don't tip anywhere else really except for America. But I still always did, you know? I it was just used to it, and so I've always tipped. And this was actually a pretty big issue with me and my husband when we lived back in America because he is very Dutch. And when I would say we have to tip at least 20%, he was like, no, like, I don't want to. Like, they don't, but what do they do to deserve 20% of this? And I was always like, yeah, well, it's just what you do. You have to do it. Like, there's no option. You do it. Because, you know, like, that's just the mindset there. But here it's like, yeah. You give a tip if you want to, maybe five, ten percent. But I still feel guilty when I like have a nice meal and I like leave and leave like such a little tip. I'm like, I feel like it's wrong. But yeah, my husband's like, it's not wrong. It's normal. Some people just don't even tip at all. So yeah, tipping culture is definitely different. But along with that comes the level of service. These the service industry here, they're not working for tips. So yeah. They get around to your table when they're ready for it. They take your drink order. They take your food order when they're ready for it. They don't really come check on you like in America. Um, that's one thing I do miss. <laughs> like if I need an extra sauce in America, they come and check on you. Do you need anything? How is everything tasting? Is everything okay? In here, yeah, you've got to wave them down. Like, hey, I need another sauce. Which, yeah, 
there's two sides of it here. It's more like that they just kind of leave you alone and you can have your peace and your um, experience by yourself. And there it's more like they're very like, yeah, on top of it. Where I can, so I can see why some people wouldn't like that, some people wouldn't like that. One other thing that I do not like here is the smoking culture. Everyone here smokes cigarettes. And coming from Colorado, genuinely, I don't know a single person that smokes cigarettes. And I, you never smell it because it's not allowed at cafes. It's not a lot like it's very, very, like not common there anymore. And so when I got here, I hate the smell of cigarettes. And so when I got here, and it's everywhere you go, any cafe you sit at in the summertime, every festival you go to, like everyone is smoking and it drives me nuts. <laughs> I've gotten a little bit more used to it, but it's like the first few times we went out to a festival or anything, I genuinely had a cough for three days after because of how much I feel like I was inhaling the smoke because there's just so much smoke everywhere. And I, I personally don't like that and I really, really didn't like it because when we first got here, I was pregnant and so I was, yeah, not happy with that. Um, I'm sure I'll get used to it. I choose to sit away from the tables that are smoking. I always just keep an eye out if there's a bunch of tables around and see if people are smoking around and try to go to the farthest table as possible. But yeah, it's kind of hard to escape it here. I've always heard of the Dutch directness, you know, like it's a common thing. And it is great to that people just really tell you how it is. They just, you know, if they feel something or they want to say it, they say it. Now, sometimes this is unwanted or unwarranted. <laughs> um, I've gotten a lot, especially having a baby, I've gotten a lot of opinions of what I should do or what's best for her when I'm like, yeah, I don't need to know your opinion really. But in a lot of other cases, it is nice. Like the first time my husband told me when I asked him if he liked my outfit and he said no, I was just like, what? You were supposed to lie to me, you know? <laughs> But because that's just the way it is in America. It's like if you ask a girl if she looks fat or if she looks, if, she, if you don't like her outfit, you just lie and say it looks nice or you look fine, you know? But here, yeah, he, he was just like, yeah, no, I don't like it. You should probably change. <laughs> but, but then, and honestly, it's nice getting that from someone when it's like, so then I didn't go out in public looking not so nice, you know? So I personally appreciate it. I can see a lot of people not appreciating it, but I do definitely appreciate my husband's directness. Stranger's directness, maybe not so much, but my husband's or my person, like my personal family's, I do enjoy. Okay, one thing that they do here that I find wild <laughs> is when you greet like your friends or your family, you give them three kisses, not one, not two, but three, I feel like I'm like a, a duck pecking away. Like it's wild and it's not always. So I don't know what, what other families, but like my husband's family, like sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't. And I'm always so awkward with it where I'm like, I give a half hug and then I'm like, okay, is the three kisses happening? Are we doing one kiss? Are we just doing a, a hug? Are we, what's going on? And I, half the time I mess it up. And so it's kind of a running joke in our family now that they're like, three kisses or they yeah they just kind of make fun of me at this point but it's fine i feel like it's a lot like three kisses but it feels so like sweet also one thing is that birthday parties they say happy birthday or well it's really congratulations or felicities correct me if i said that wrong felicities but you say it to every single person at the party. So if you walk into a birthday party and there's 10 people there, you don't just say Felicitid to the person whose birthday it is. You say it to every single person that at the party. You go shake hands or give a hug and say Felicitid, Felicitid, Felicitid. The, and yeah, the first time I went to a party, my husband didn't warn me about this. And so I walked in and we just, I, I didn't do it because I didn't know what was supposed to happen. But every time someone new came in, they all would come and greet everyone and say this thing. And I didn't know what the word meant yet. And I was like, what do they keep saying to me? Cause like, it's not the normal, like, oi, like, who am I? Or like, how are you? Like, hello, my name is. So I was like, what, what are they saying to me? Like everyone is saying the 
same thing. But what is it? Yeah. And so that's, that's what it is. They say congratulations to everyone at the party. Even like yesterday, it was my brother's birthday. And I told Brown, I was like, oh, it's, it's my whole birthday. And he was like, oh, congratulations. I'm like, congratulations? It's not my birthday. It's his birthday. But yeah. <laughs> Um, I think it's just a quirky little thing you guys do here in the Netherlands that, yeah, I like it. It gives me stress at parties, thinking, especially if it's a party where I know everyone or I know most people, it's fine. But, like, ah, we were just at his brother's birthday, and I only knew, like, two people out of the, like, 30 people. And I was like, I don't want to go around and say this to everyone. Like, I'm too nervous. But, <laughs> yeah, it was fine. Moving on from the socialization, we're going to move on to children. So here, life for children is amazing. And this is actually one of the main reasons we moved here because I was pregnant and I thought raising our daughter in the Netherlands was going to be much better than in America. Children are just so much more free here. They have lots of like parks and festivals and uh, so many zoos and museums and everything everywhere that kids can go to all the time. Like kids can just like go down to the park by themselves and it's just normal here. Um, and th that way of life just makes me really, really happy. The school life balance is great. On the end of school is one thing is wild that I found out is you can get Mind if you take your kids out of school for the day like if you went on a holiday and you come back one day after break you can get fined like you're not allowed to take your kids out of school unless it's like they're sick or like a valid reason which I found yeah I was really surprised at that because when I was a kid yeah my, we would always go on vacation and we'd always come back one day late or one day early we'd leave because yeah flights and Everything was just so much cheaper to go back one day later or one day earlier. So it was always better just to do that. Or sometimes me and my mom, my mom just like wanted to go shopping with us for the day or something. Which now that I think about it, yeah, it makes sense. Like it's good that you they really push kids that need to be in school all the time. But it gives you a little less wiggle room and freedom with that. <laughs> She's just wiggling around. Also, the children, or really anyone here, yeah, all right, do not wear helmets on their bikes. I know the biking culture here is great. Everyone rides a bike. Everyone knows how to ride a bike. The build, the roads are built for bikes. But still, like, kids fall, I'm sure. And so I'm so surprised that children here don't wear helmets. I think I've seen maybe one kid here wearing a helmet in the nine months that I've been here. And so that's, that's wild to me. <laughs> but, you know, I guess, I guess the incidence of injury rates aren't super high or else, yeah, it would be an issue. But yeah, no one does. Health insurance is for free for children until they are 18. That is amazing when i found this out i was so happy i went to add my daughter onto my insurance i was expecting the premium to go up or her to have like the same insurance as me and they just said yeah she's fully covered it's free you just have to add her and she's covered for everything dental like physical therapy everything is covered until she is 18 and so that is absolutely wonderful one other thing about the schools is that they don't have sports in school I think that that's kind of, yeah, I don't like that. I prefer sports to be in school. I did love being able to be part of sports in school. I think it brings a certain kind of work ethic and team, like team building, being able to work as a team. Um, there's a lot of factors as being part of a team that I think are great and being able to do it as part of the school. Cause I know a lot of parents don't have the resources to take them to practices and pay for an extra thing but in America it's part of the school so you go to your school day and then you just stay after school and do this work and so that's really nice there which I am not really sure I know that it's not the same here and you have to do private clubs and I'm not sure about exactly the cost of everything but I do know that it's not part of school and so that's one thing that I think I'll miss out on 
but I'm sure we'll still keep her in sports. So either way, she will do sports, but it's just not in school. Enough with the kids. Let's move on to housing. Now, let me tell you, housing in the Netherlands is not easy, okay? Getting a rental apartment is difficult. They will go on the market and then like a hundred people will want to view it or apply for it and one person gets it and yeah. Especially for us, it was really hard moving here because like Brown's self-employed and so like the proof of income, yeah, he had proof of income of course, but yeah, people would rather just like a contract from a company and so we definitely had a hard time finding a house and still even now we're trying to figure out if we can move because where we live is actually quite expensive for what we get like we have a pretty small house relative to how much we pay we do live in the city but um we would prefer maybe a little more space a little bit outside the city if we could but still like finding something is so hard that it's like it goes in the market and it's gone right away also some houses come without anything like you say like oh it's a new built house but if even if you're a renter you have to put flooring in the house that is bizarre to me like you have to put your own flooring in and technically you can take it when you leave but like you cut the pieces to the layout of the house so like why would you want to take it? Yeah, I don't know. I thought that was so wild when I first, um, when we first were looking at houses and man was like, oh yeah, there's no, there's no floor and we, we can choose our own floor. I'm like, what? And like, even sometimes the backyard's not done. You have to put grass or anything. It's just like dirt or appliances sometimes aren't in. And yeah, so that was definitely a shock to me. Also, um, Houses here don't really have closets. Like rooms are just a room. Like there's no closet in them. Some have a built-in closet, like Ikea pack closet, but most rooms are just room. Like there's no closet. There's, I've yet to see a single house with a walk-in closet. Whereas in America, we are so used to having walk-in closets or at least a wall closet. Like a, a, in most states, a room is not technically a bedroom unless there's a closet in it. It just bizarre to me, like where are people supposed to put their clothes? I guess dressers and stuff, or people just buy closets and put them in their houses. But yeah, so that was a surprise to me because yeah, you think a room is this big, but then you gotta factor in the space that you need to use your, find your like closet space. And the sizes of the room are much smaller. A lot of people that have come to our house, they're like, wow, like it's so big in here. It's so nice, you have a big kitchen, like your living room is so big. And I'm like, big? This feels so small to me compared to what we're used to, you know? But I mean, it's super livable. We have everything that we need, and so we don't really need any more space freely in specific rooms. We would like more rooms and more storage space, but yeah, like the kitchen is it's big enough for me to cook in, and that's really all that matters. Now, the refrigerator is so tiny i was really afraid of this when i first moved here because like what do you put in it not much but in america you go to the grocery store and you buy groceries for the whole week and here that's not really a thing like you go and you buy groceries for like maybe two or three days because everything is so fresh here and there's not as many chemicals or, or pesticides or preservatives in the in the food that it goes bad fast way faster here than it does in america so yeah you don't go and buy a whole week's worth of, of food and so you don't need as big of a refrigerator so yeah i found i thought it was going to be a really big issue but i've learned yeah you just have to go grocery shopping more often <laughs> oh all the houses have this little teeny tiny toilet room like it's like the guest bathroom and i think it's so convenient and genius like what do the guest bathrooms need a big luxurious bathroom yeah I'm right uh, they don't really need a big bathroom. They need a toilet and a little sink and that's all that's in there and it just doesn't take up so much space But it's ever in every house that I've been to which is super convenient The standard of building though is much higher like even down to the paint like everything is 
much more precise here in the Netherlands. Everything is much more insulated. It's much more high quality here than it is in America. My husband always talked about how like everything is just made from wood there, where here everything's made from, I think, concrete. Um, and so, yeah, that's definitely a good thing. Like here in our house, we have, um, we'll put her in our bedroom and I'll be sitting in the living room and if she's crying, I can't hear her. Like I hear absolutely nothing from the bedroom. If we were going, we're going to my parents' house next week in America and I was like, well, we need to bring the baby monitor. And Ram goes, no, we don't. If she cries, we'll hear her. The wood, the floors are made like paper, <laughs> which is true. You can hear pretty much everything in like the whole house, even though the house is probably twice the size of our apartment. And so, yeah, <laughs> that's one thing that is the quality of builds here are much higher. Along with building houses, um, I don't know if it's just, yeah, I think that they've got like one developer or something or one architect and every single new build house is the same layout. Like we have looked at probably hundreds of properties at this point and they all have the same layout for all the new build properties. It's like all the duplexes or townhouses where it's just like you walk in, there's the living room, the bathroom, the little bathroom, the kitchen, the upstairs has three bedrooms and a bathroom, then there's the upstairs roof room. Like, and they're always the same, like basically the same layout. Maybe a tiny bit of variation, but which, I mean, it's nice, you know what you're getting and it's a, yeah, I guess it's a convenient layout, but yeah, it's not the biggest variety of options when you uh, break it down. <laughs> now, on to random things. Um, the fashion here. Everyone dresses nice every day. Like, I am a true American leggings and a t-shirt or a hoodie or a sports, sports outfit every day kind of girl. And that does not fly here, okay? No one wears leggings daily. And I, even just like going out to take out the trash, I feel like I need to get dressed up to go outside because I live in the middle of the city because so everyone else is dressed nice. I don't, I still just go out looking like a bum and then I just really look like a bum because no one else around me is wearing either sweatpants or leggings. Everyone's wearing jeans. I, I like it. I wish I had the motivation to get nice, nicely dressed every day. I just don't. I mean, now I'm still in my postpartum body era. So I'm trying to figure out what fits me, what looks good now. So I'll get back to it eventually. The medical way of thinking here is much different than in America. Here, I was shocked to see how natural they like everything. Basically, like if you have an injury, they're like, ah, oh, take a paracetamol, which is like a Tylenol and you'll be fine. You want, no one gets like the flu shot or anything unless you're like actually at risk for it. Um, with kids, they're very much more like, yeah, she's fine. Like they'll be okay. Kind of a, like with childbirth as well, it's much more natural, much more unmedicated. Like they don't like to use as many drugs or as much um, like hands on. They're very much more like hands off. Like your body knows what it's doing. You'll figure it out. And I personally appreciate that. Sometimes I worry as like, if there's something really wrong and I feel like something's really wrong and they're like, ah, no, you're fine. But I'm like, yeah, but something's wrong. Like I need, I want more than just, ah, you're fine. You know, that has yet to have been a big problem, but yeah, I could, I could see that bothering people. People's height. They are so tall. Okay. I am short. I'm five foot one, which is, I don't know how many centimeters, like 155, I think. Um, so I'm, I'm sh a short girl and my husband is six foot. I also don't know what that is. Like 180, I think. And when I told him, I'm like, Oh yeah, like you're, you're tall. He's like six, one or six, two. I was like, you're pretty tall. And he was like, no, like I'm short. I was like, you're short. What do you mean? You're way taller than most people. Cause when I met him, he was in America. And so when I came here, I realized, oh yeah, you are short compared to the average Dutch person. It kind of makes me sad because when I go to like 
uh, concert or festival, I never want to be on the, on the floor because I can't see anything anymore because I'm so short compared to these giants. Even the women here are so tall. The public transportation here is, it's great. It gets you everywhere around, but it is so expensive. Like to get from here to Utrecht, which is a 25 minute drive, it cost me round trip almost 20 euros to get there. Like that is, I feel like that's super expensive. I guess when you take into effect the fact that you have to pay for parking everywhere in the Netherlands, um, when you drive there and pay for parking, it's probably the same amount anyways. But yeah, it's pretty pricey to get around here. On the note of money, the average salary and like what people consider like a good income is quite low compared to what I would what I would assume is a good income or is like average. Um, here, like what I made in America as a nanny is like a super good salary here in the Netherlands. And I think that is bizarre. I mean, I guess it makes sense because there's a lot of government funding and different things that are, yeah, make it easier to live on a lower income. But yeah, I when I first found that out, I was like, that's wild that that's like a good income. But yeah, and I guess in America, everything is much more expensive, like housing here, our apartment is expensive for here. But if it was in America, it would be a steal. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, here, everything is definitely cheaper. I would say, I would say there's not much that's more expensive here, except for transportation. Um, and like gas, yeah, gasoline is like, quadruple what it is in America. You guys pay here, I think like 220 for gasoline per liter. And we pay in America, or at least by my parents' house, it's like $2, $2 per gallon, which is like almost four liters. So yeah, quite a significant amount more here. I don't have to worry about gas because we have an electric car, but still. Now, if you guys have watched any of my other videos, you will know that driving to me here is insane. I am terrified of driving here. There are so many roundabouts and there are so many bikers. And I just like feel like I can never watch out my mirrors enough to like see all of the stuff that's going on and not hit anyone. And you guys don't even have like stop signs really. So it's like, you just have to know the rules of like the person on the right has the right away. And I see how that's convenient, so you don't always have to stop all the time. But like, I would just prefer a stop sign. <laughs> to be honest, I wouldn't mind stopping. I would just, I would prefer a stop sign, I think. And getting your driver's license here is one, super expensive, and two, takes a super long time. Like the next available appointment for me to take my driver's test was in August. That is months and months and months away. And so, yeah, that is, that is different for me. Uh, definitely a culture shock. And lastly, I think this is the big, everyone thinks Amsterdam, they think weed and sex workers. But it, it, it is legal here, which is, but in a sense, it's like, since it's legal, it's not really like a big deal. Like, yeah, I, the first time I saw a billboard of like, a sex worker or like a, a yeah prostitution on a billboard I was like did that really say that like what and but yeah it's just like normal it's not stigmatized it's just part of the way of life people use it people don't I think that that's better than having to like it be illegal then there's a stigma around it and then it's like you're a bad person if you do it or you get in trouble if you do it or I feel like more people are enticed to do it because it's the bad thing, like to be the bad boy. But here it's just like, yeah, it's normal if you do, if you don't, that's also normal. Uh, I'm surprised on how few people I see that smoke weed. I thought it would be much more common coming from Colorado. I feel like everyone I know there smokes weed. Every single person, yeah, pretty much. Like all of my friends all did. I never did, but here, I don't think I know anyone that openly or regularly does it. 
which I was, I'm surprised about that. But yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure there are cultures or people that do, of course, or these businesses wouldn't be in, or maybe they just do it in private here. But yeah, I'm done. <laughs> but yeah, I think that that's everything. I think we've kind of summed up the, no, eating. Eating here is so different. People eat so much bread here. The amount of bread that is consumed in the Dutch diet is bizarre to me. I think I've eaten more bread living in the Netherlands for the last nine months than I've eaten in my entire life. People eat bread for breakfast, lunch, and on the side for dinner. I swear, bread and cheese, bread and hagelslaw. That's breakfast and lunch. That is crazy to me. Like, do your guts not feel, I mean, I guess the bread here is much better. And so your gut, it doesn't hurt your belly as much, but like, <sighs> I feel like a bigger variety would be nice. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If there's anything that I missed or that you're like, that's not true, that's not part of the Dutch culture, or if you have any other suggestions on videos you'd like to see from me, please leave that in the comments down below. I really hope you liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and make sure to subscribe for any future videos.